Hi everyone, it's Tracy here from Art Fibre Stitch. Now I have this lovely crocheted vest that unfortunately in the last wash started to unravel. It's got holes in it now. So rather than try and repair it, I'm going to use it. And uh, I pulled some of the threads off. I'm going to use it in a needle felting project because that's easier with my broken wrist. And I'm just going to use some of this plum colored background. It's an acrylic felt. Just cut it into a reasonable size here. There. Now let's have a look. I liked the plum felt because I liked the color that showed underneath this, this vest, this crocheted lace. And uh, what bit would I use? Well, I've got one bit with flowers, one bit's got a nice edge, one bit's a geometric shape. So I'm just choosing a portion of it, cutting out a rough rectangle, and we'll start. So we're going to experiment a little and, uh, and see if we can use this underneath and do a bit of needle felting through the holes. This crocheted um, vest lace, <laughs> it's not really going to want to felt through. Remember how needle felting is when you push fibers through the felt and towards the back and it anchors it to the felt. Well, there's not really any fibers on there. So I'm going to try a few different techniques here and we'll see how we go. I'm not doing a landscape or a seascape. I'm just going to do something, a pattern, I don't know, an abstract, and we'll see what happens. But can you see I've collected a few bits and I've got some uh, linen that I've hand dyed. I've got some hessian and I have some glittery, silvery uh, mesh or lace fabric and I'm just having a go okay I've got that that's nice I wonder if I would see this I could put it either over top or underneath would I see some of that shine through there you know so it's worth an experiment it has these ones here have got lovely big holes in them so I mean the weave is very uh, loose and so it, it's really perfect for having um, fibers um, pushed through those holes and anchoring it like that. So that's what I am doing. I'm just sort of putting some shapes down and um, later I'm going to get some wool and I'm going to needle felt over the top of it. What happens when I put you know, it's all an experiment. What happens when you put that over top? You kind of lose it a bit. Maybe not. I would just have a little bit of it and see if it shows up in random places. There we go, something like that. Snip that bit off. And this is the hessian, the green, lovely lime green. It's a nice color. I'm not sure what I want to do. I don't want a square of it. I like shapes that aren't quite so dramatic because I'm hoping to make something and then let it build itself and tell me what it ends up being you know so um, let's just have a, a thin strip of it and see see if we end up seeing it doesn't really matter if it gets covered it's just playing so I also have these yarns that I'm going to try this one's an, a net kind of yarn like uh, fishnet stockings almost. You could use stockings. You could use a lot of things. Anyway, I just thought nice big holes so we could get something uh, belted through that. So I'm slaying a few bits and bobs up and we'll see how that goes. And then I'll pop my lace over the top. Now, what do I think? I can see those bits of green, the bits of blue. It looks quite nice. But maybe I've obscured it too much. Maybe I'd like some things not only underneath, but on top. This is really going to be a quite a heavy kind of background. 
so it's going to be interesting to see how it all comes together like I say a bit of an experiment but here's some more of that kind of uh, yarn that's like a fishnet stocking I'm just going to put some on the top as well because I think if it's spread out like that you can actually see the lace underneath as well so um, yeah, I quite like that we have bits of different layers I'm going to pop in some threads too there's a nice hairy thread um, but I'm thinking these pink ones this pink fabric this linen that has all of the the nice loose weave I'm going to cut it into a smaller kind of circleish shape and I'm going to pull it and tease it and see what kind of shape it looks like there and I think it, that looks better on the top I can work with that so I'm going to add um, another one and then I'll probably cut another as well because it does look better when you have three instead of two of something it seems to balance it better so place all your pieces down where you think you're going to uh, want them rummage them around a little bit and then the next section will be trying to tack it down with some needle felting so what have we got how's this for a sort of background for our felting and maybe later we might do a bit more embroidery or something on it so I'm going to grab some wool roving out now and I'm going to place it very very finely over top of some of that crocheted and uh, and other fabrics that I have there now I'm using my felting needle and I am going through all of those layers and I'm taking that roving through to the back and it's going into the sponge and as long as uh, you go up and down in the same way with your needle and don't put it in and turn it and then try and bring it out uh, you're not going to snap the needle and it'll last for a long long time so I'm going to add a little bit of that first in different places just to try and get it to start to hold itself down to tack it down move things around and decide where I want them and add a little bit of that fine roving you can see here I have brought some of those laces to the top I've trapped it I've put some orange and pink from a um, woolen yarn I've threaded it I've shredded it off that and I've done sort of vague circles around those and that suggested flowers now I'm afraid I lost the footage that I had done between the last stage and this but we're going to cover a lot of it in this next section anyway but right now I'm going to try using some of that um, crinkly unraveled crochet cotton and I'm just going to tack it down there now like I said that one yeah little bits of it might stick but it won't stick that well so I'll put something over the top of it but what I'm thinking is you know we maybe we can pick out uh, I don't know petals edges something something to make people think oh yes it is a flower that kind of thing so now I'm grabbing a bit of uh, variegated yarn a woolen yarn I shred it apart and I've got all of these lovely colors to use this is a, a orange through to pink and I thought perfect let's add a little bit of that on we'll tint that um, a creamy colored unraveled cotton and it's going to trap it down bits of it might show and then in the center you know, maybe I'll start to see what was in the center underneath all those layers you know what was there was that um, blue hairy yarn that I put down maybe I could expose some of that instead of putting something down on the center I can expose the back layers I think that would work so yeah 
I like that. I'm looking at that bottom section as well and thinking, what will I do there? So I'm getting out some other yarn. This is exactly the same sort of thing. It's wool, it's been hand dyed and it's made into a yarn, but it really is just wool. So I'm going to pull it out and put little snippets of it. Bring a bit of green in with all of that blue. You know, maybe they'll look like leaves or something. Just small little patches of it here and there. And because what it's doing is it's tacking all those layers down. You know, it is the wool robing that will go through to the back and hold all those things down. So with those green little tufts, I'm going to felt that down now with the needle. I do like where it's going so far, but that's the way I like to do it. I like to do a little bit and then just think, oh, I'd like a little bit of something else there, or that needs something, or that, that wasn't right. You can always pull this off, you know, and start again. There's no problem with that. Look at how when I pull that one out, you can still see a lot of that underneath, but it's now tinted it. You can still see it. So experiment with all different kinds of bits and pieces and see what you can come up with. And uh, like I said, this was a vest that I thought was too pretty to just throw out. Oh, doesn't that look nice? I quite like that. Hmm. But we need something to hold it down. We'll just pop a little bit of green, green roving over the top. So we've covered it in the past, how to needle felt. I figure there's a long way to go with all different kinds of things. But really, get yourself a needle, get yourself a sponge. Uh, you know, you can just do it all with yarns if you have some nice woolen yarns. Um, and mix it up. The needle goes in and out the same direction. As you go in, you pull it out. If you turned it, it would snap. So that's the only trick you've got to have. And using a sponge means that you're able to push those fibres through and you're not going to jab the table with your needle. You need a nice thick one. And I'll continue here and I will end up having to do a whole lot more jabbing. But I'm only working on trying to get it held down at the moment. Sometimes I'm using my needle to expose areas underneath. I'm going to pull out some more of that nice blue furry hairy kind of yarn because I like that in the center but that's what's so good about this craft you can move things around you can you know it's very fluid now of course the more jabbing you do the better the more it will flatten out and meld with that background piece of felt but like I say, I just want to make sure that I've got it covered all over a little bit. And um, because what I want to be able to do is then pick up that felt. Have a look on the back how it has come through everywhere. And what it's doing is I can lift that up and move it around and it's trapped those heavy pieces of lace and all kinds of things behind. And uh, that's worked. That's what I wanted. Here I'm going to use some more of that uh, unraveled. You know, have you ever done that? Undone something that's knitted or crocheted and you end up with these lovely textured ripply threads. And at the moment I'm picking up some of the roving that's already there and I'm just making sure I've trapped that under bits of it. I'll lift that up, poke that under a little bit. There we go. That's all i got to do. And we've got one more flower. So I did the three flowers. I think it always works better. And not in a line, but sort of, you know. It just looks better if they're, you know, more natural. But look at these spirals. Doesn't that look good? 
haven't decided where to put them yet but I'll do the same thing I'll do the um I'll do sorry I'm looking at that and thinking oh wouldn't that be nice couched on the brain just keeps going in different directions um but yeah we'll do the same thing we'll hold that down with a bit of uh, wool over top and it's really building up into something nice now so I do like to keep snippets of all different colors because I use them I don't only like you know bright I do like subtle as well I'd sometimes I'd like to do trees and things so I have natural colors I have all kinds of different uh, textures colors yeah I call it my palette you know because uh, that's what I'm doing I'm painting a picture almost and this one's gonna be a real zany picture it's bright it's cheerful I think it's gonna be fine uh, but I'm thinking you know it'll be I need to do a whole lot more of this stabbing stabbing is very therapeutic doesn't use any muscles you know I broke my left wrists so this is a great one for me to be doing at the moment especially as it's helping me get rid of some of my frustrations it's very therapeutic the up down almost mechanical motion and if you're allowing yourself to be free and uh, plan as you go letting it build itself now this is going to take quite a lot more stabbing and you know you'll pop a little color here to hold that bit down see how I'm using that again to tint and to hold areas of that unraveled lace down but whilst I'm doing it I'm also thinking what would I like to do after I've gotten it you know tacked down what what else could I do sometimes I picture things like couching or would some beading on this one look nice or embroidery stitches I don't know we're not trying to create a realistic uh, photo kind of picture this is a representation this is just enjoying the colors but I can see flowers in it is what you say it is at the moment it could be a lot of different kinds of flowers I don't get too wrapped up in trying to be exact really if you like if you know what colors you like and what colors you like to put together then you can do this it doesn't need to be a, a flower it could be anything but I mean you know what colors you like what textures Just start having a go right well let's lift it up and have a look yeah you can see that all of the woolen bits have poked through and uh, it's looking really good and we can pick it up and we can toss it around if we want it's not going to come apart on us whilst we're finishing off so I'm just going to do a little bit more to my flowers just get a good background happening and hold it down don't forget you can always change it you can use the tip of your needle to pull the roving apart or push it over or expose the background you know that plum color we don't have too much of that showing maybe we'll do that so I'm using it there to push that and think about where I might light things And that's why I think it's so versatile because you can change your mind as often as you like. See, and I'm pulling out some of that thread underneath. Right, let's have a bit of a closer look at, at it all. Now stay tuned, at the end I always put some nice pictures of close ups in so that you can see the detail. But you're getting a good look here. It's definitely held down so look at it and think oh, 
did I want anything more what do I think would be good and I just think I'm just going to add a tiny bit of of this dark blue navy color I'm going to put it underneath that flower because I want that flower to show up just a little bit better and I'll use it like a shadow I could make it sparse and like a um, you know thin veneer over top or I can use it bunched up see here I'm sort of thinking I want a long thin bit and I just want it more there and I'm going to pull it round and you know you can change it and you know it'll probably just keep changing that's that's what I do but I definitely think I would like to spend some time now going jab 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 and um, getting it ready for the final touches can you see glimpses of things underneath? You can see that silvery mesh. You can see the, um, I don't know that I can see the hessian. I'd have to have a closer look for that. But you can see quite a few of the things that we've used underneath. Right, leave me now with the jabbing. Let's have a look at some of the close-ups as we finish up here. I really do thank you for watching. I hope you've been interested and you're going to give it a go yourself. If you've liked the video, don't forget to press like and subscribe if you haven't already. And thank you for being interested. I'll see you next time and we'll come back and work on this one and really make it something even more special. Thank you.